Do you want to know the top four things we screwed up when we built our rooftop tent trailer? Find out now. It's surprised how many things actually worked in our favor when we did the build, but there's a few things that uh, we definitely could have improved on. So we took our 10 year old Costco purchased lifetime utility trailer, ordered some steel, and then we got our Tough Stuff Alpha rooftop tent to throw on top. So when we put this together, we didn't actually have our rooftop tent yet. So we used measurements online to build out and decide the placement of all of the bars. The side racks are just a smidge too close. And a pain in the butt to get your fingers in, but it still works. You gotta kinda get the Velcro done. This one's pretty easy, release it, not a big deal. And of course the joint with its bolt sticking out is perfectly situated right where we need to be. This is Chewy. He went and got himself stuck inside this bush and now he can't get up without help. As you can tell, Greg normally sets this up. So when you're putting out the ladder, you extend, you start at the bottom, extending one rung at a time until you get to the top. And you want to you want to lock it in place so the roof actually has something to rest against. And actually right there, it's perfect. You can see the ladder is almost straight up and down, which is not very conducive to getting in and out. The height of our tent ends up being, I think, lower than normal. So when we put the ladder about where it should be, and then we extend it all the way up, it's not actually catching the next rung. There's the next rung, as you can see, it's a little too high. So either we end up having to go out a little farther than we would want, depending on our camping area. I think if we could have done it again, I would have, if I was able to measure that, and have it um, just a little bit taller or a little bit shorter, then I think it would have been perfect. Or we could always get a different ladder. We have always loved camping in state parks, but with our big travel trailer. So this nice smaller one lets us go into the Forest Service parks, which are awesome. Most of the campsites are passenger oriented. So you park on the passenger side, get out, and there's your space. Well, unfortunately, we didn't plan that well with the awning. <laughs> so when we get to most of the campsites, we actually have to flip the trailer around and the trailer's not too heavy when it's unloaded. And that lets us use the awning. So this one is the driver's side version because it opens up on the driver's side. Um, if we could do it again, we would do the passenger side and just flip the tent. It then would open up towards the big campsites when they're actual a designated campsite. If you're out in the open, dry camping, out in the boonies, it doesn't matter. So we had ordered and built everything at the beginning of summer and got our kitchen built, gorgeous, stained it with leftover deck stain two days before our first camping trip. And boy, was it stinky. If we could do it over again, we would definitely, definitely not use this. We'd try to find some sort of kitchen stain or some sort of sealant that doesn't stink to high heaven. It was really bad. We actually couldn't even put some of our food in the, in the drawers we made because it all smelled like deck stain. One of the best things. Don't get dirty shoes inside the tent. Foot cramp. Honestly, we lucked out on a few things during the build. If we had to do it over again and have the time, it would have been very helpful to have the tent on site so we can measure and see how things lined up before designing the rack. But I think overall we actually did pretty well. Yep, it's really fun to sleep in. <laughs> As usual, you'll find our favorite gear in the descriptions below. If you really like our videos, hit the subscribe button. 
to help our small channel grow. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in our next video.